Hi guys, how's it going? How are you doing today? Hopefully today finds you well. Today I am doing my palette roulette video and I think this is episode 149 and that's so exciting. So today we'll be going over the Ace Beauty Flare palette and if that sounds like something that you're interested in, please keep watching. For those of you new here, hi, my name is Donna. I'm so, so happy to have you here on our channel. I I'm a lover of all things high-end, colorful beauty and self-care. I do a lot of reviews here on this channel. I work in the beauty industry. YouTube is a hobby and therefore I'm inundated with beauty all the time. I like to bring you some of the education that I get in my position in the beauty industry and therefore I do a lot of reviews but I also do just basic makeup chit chat. I love talking about makeup and you are my people. You are the people that I get to do that with. So I hope that you enjoy yourself here today and I hope that you'll want to subscribe before you go. But without further ado, let's jump in to this palette. So today we are going over the Ace Beauty Flare palette and this palette is a really like quintessential fall color story in my opinion. This has all kinds of five star reviews on it on both the Ace Beauty website, the Beauty Bay website, and every other website that I went on to to look at it. I think a lot of that is really driven by the color story. I do know that this is one of the palettes that they most recently reformulated and with that being said, like I didn't really think that their formula was super horrible to begin with this palette is no different. There were only a couple of standout shadows that I could really point out to you that really didn't occupy the space in the palette the way that the other ones did in, in that they weren't super fantastic. But that's not unheard of for many, many 15 pan eyeshadow palettes. So this is what the palette looks like. It is a beautiful like orange cardboard with gold filigree, much like a, like a henna tattoo on it. It is such beautiful packaging. The back of the palette just has the same orange. There's not really, there's nothing on the back of the palette except for this little stain here, which is, I don't even have a clue. So I love the packaging in and of itself. And then when you open up the palette, this is the color story that you see. There is a mirror here. It's a rather large mirror. And then the palette is just beautiful. I mean, it, it truly is just a beautiful palette. There are 15 eyeshadows in this palette. It equates to 0.84 ounces of product or each one of these pans being 0.057 ounces of product, which is a tad bit bigger, honestly, than a regular like ColourPop eyeshadow or even a MAC eyeshadow. This is a cruelty-free formula and I couldn't find anywhere on it where it said it was a vegan formula, but there is no carmine in this formulation. There's also not really any animal product sure that I could find in the formulation to make it non-vegan, but it doesn't say that it's vegan on the website. With that said, it also doesn't say that there are any properties in this palette that are not FDA approved for the eyes, but this palette does, I'm certain, have some pressed pigments in it that contain those properties that make them not FDA safe. Again, allegedly, according to me, I have no idea because it doesn't say so on the on the website and I couldn't find it also on the packaging of the palette. So allegedly with that being said, that is not a deal breaker for me. I just like finding out that information for you guys if I can. There are 15 shades in here, 11 of them are mattes, three of them are metallics and one of them is a duochrome. So some things that I love about this palette. This is a black owned brand, so it's super pigmented and it's formulated to really show up on people of a darker skin tone without any effort at all. It also is super blendable and they don't get muddy. So I loved that about them. I did not notice any visible fallout either when using these shades, which is pretty spectacular, especially for, you know, some of the darker shadows in here. The wear time of these shadows were was about seven hours, which I think is a decent amount of time for me. I like to wear my shadows around that, you know, nine to 12 hour 
point but at nine hours I'm pretty much out of my work day and it's not as necessary that they be out and proud you know on my eyes so I think that seven hour wear time is a really decent wear time uh the color story like I, I just can't with this color story I love this color story so much it speaks to my soul on so many levels and I just can't with this color story. It is the thing that really drew me into this palette from the very get, right? Um, I also love that this palette is really broken up into three like five pan palettes, right? So you have this row here, which is really those purpley reds in, in tone. And then you have your oranges and brown row. And then you have your green blue row. And I think that that is amazing that they built the palette like that because it really tells a story to a new client, a new guest, a new person that is just picking up this palette. They're going to know exactly how to work with this palette. I dare to say I could work with this palette for two more weeks and probably come up with tons more eye looks. I only have pictures of three eye looks for you, this one included, because I Honestly, it was as I'm onboarding last week, y'all knew this. And whereas I think that that means I'm going to have a whole lot more time to work with a palette, it typically just doesn't work out that way. Best laid plans, right? Best laid plans. So I only have three eye looks, but I did use every single color in this palette. And I'm happy to say that I didn't really struggle with a lot of these shadows at all. Um, they feel really silky in your fingers. You can tell they're super finely milled and you can you can tell by the pigmentation on on immediate lay down that this is by a black owned brand and it's specifically made for persons of color to put on their face without having to really pack on a shadow to get what they want from an eye look. The mattes perform very, very well. There's hardly any fading of them. The shimmers um, or metallics, I think also perform very, very well. They're not too chunky. They don't create a lot of like texture on your eyelid. Um, one of their downfalls, I would say, is that they do tend to crease. So with that being said, let's go into the opportunities. And I don't like to say I hate it or that these are hate factors because I don't hate this palette at all. There's nothing about this palette that I disliked to the extent that I can say it's going in the garbage can, I'll never touch it again. Some of the opportunities that I felt like um, this palette had was that these shadows are really um, soft, but also very hard pressed. So as you are digging into a certain shadow, it's gonna create a lot of kick up in the pan, which kind of makes a mess of your palette. That's not a deal breaker for me. I do know that that is a deal breaker for some people watching, so, like, there you go. That's it. Um, with that said, it didn't transition to also fall out on my eyes that I noticed. Some of them, though, are, are pretty hard to pick up on a brush and get a decent amount of pigment on your brush in order to place it on your eye look. Some of these shadows look the exact same. So let's pick up the palette again and I'll show you. On an eye look, this color, this color, and this color look the exact same. As a matter of fact, I have all three of these on my eye look today. And while I was able to deepen up the crease and you can see some kind of variegation, it does look and appear as if it's the same orange when it in fact is not. These two shadows down here also look the exact same. I have a halo eye look that these two colors were placed into, and you guys will be able to see the pictures, you can't tell the difference. I couldn't tell the difference between the two shadows on that halo eye. So um, I think that we could have done away with one or two of the oranges and then, you know, one or the other of these and had different colors to bring into the palette and felt a little more well-rounded. One thing that I think that it lacks is a traditional transition shade or a lighter shade for us fair lady folks. I, I understand that 90% of palettes are made with, you know, people of my skin tone in mind. So I'm not saying that that is a deal breaker for me. I am a hashtag purple as a transition kind of person. Like I don't care and don't really typically go for a transition color. But if I were somebody who was 
was a transition person of my skin tone looking at this palette, I would think, oh, well, this would make a great transition, but it's a shimmer. This would make a great transition, but it's honestly really dark when you get it into an eye look and it's very, very lavender. So unless you're going one way, that doesn't work as a transition. The rest of the colors are, are really not transition tones for somebody of my skin tone. Not a deal breaker for me. I don't care. I'll use, as I said, purple as a transition. Today I used orange as transition. Transition. I don't care. Um, but some people do. So like thinking through the lens of those people and really trying to bring you an overall review, I had to make note of that. I would also say that I really like palettes that have a good mix of mattes and shimmers and this only has four shimmers in it and one of them is a duochrome which is a beautiful duochrome. I do have it on my inner corner today. It's a beautiful duochrome and it kind of can lean pink or kind of can lean gold so it goes really well with both of these rows of shadows but I would say when you get into this row it's probably not the best suited match as far as a shimmer goes and I do think that the four shimmers in that palette are great shimmers for that palette but I also think that like through the lens of the shadows that look the exact same in an eye look we could have done with a couple different mattes in there and a couple different shimmers in there and had a more well-rounded mix. I love me a good solid pigmented matte, but I also like me a good solid shimmer. Not that I don't think that the shimmers in this palette go with this palette structure. I definitely think that they picked the right colors of shimmer to go into this palette for there only being four, but I, I would have loved to have seen a little bit more shimmer. I personally, personal preference, like a palette that has kind of like a 50-50 mix. And the very last opportunity that I can see in this that also is not a deal breaker for me and I don't care but I know that a lot of other people do is that some of the shadows in this palette do cause quite a bit of staining which leads me to believe that this is a vegan formula because when it's not a vegan formula I don't see as, min as much staining as I would in a non-vegan formula but these two shadows here stain so so bad this one isn't so bad because it does it is kind of a sheer ap application of this color story this one is the only one that I would say in the palette you really have to build up well no I take that back this one and this one in the palette I think that you really have to build up this one also stains quite a bit again not a deal breaker for me but I do know that it's a deal breaker for some some of my people out there so I think that this palette is best with a with a primer, best with a dry primer. I do not think that it functions very well with your more creamy or emollient primer, which we all know I like to put on my eyes. Today I have a drier formula on my eyes as the primer and it does nothing but irritate my eyes, which is why I think I kind of shy away from primers like Urban Decay Primer Potion or the more drier end of the spectrum when it comes to a primer formula but this formula of shadow does much better on a dry eyeshadow base. So if you're going to use a more emollient eyeshadow base, make sure that you do pull out a transition shade, especially if you're my end of the spectrum for skin tone and dry, you know, put a dry base for these shadows to go on top of. The shimmers apply much better with your finger than they do even with a densely packed brush. I felt like they gave me a lot more pizzazz and brought a lot more impact to my eye look when I approached them from applying them with my finger versus anything else. And I did have some opportunities with some of the shadows in here just not performing as well as some of the other ones. These two right here are not awful. I did love them. I loved them in an eye look. They were beautiful in an eye look, but I found that they just didn't stick around in an eye look as long as some of the other shadows did. I found that these ones I could see creasing and fading in their mattes. I could see creasing and fading in well before that seven hour mark. I would say even well before that five hour mark. I um, do have a picture that I will put in here of these, it's a, that halo eye, these two shadows being on both my inner and outer corners of my eye look. And that picture was taken about three hours after I had put that eye look on my face. So I was really kind of disappointed with that. And that might be why this formulation got 
redone, right? But I would say the only other one that I kind of felt a little bit saddened by was this one here. I really did expect a really pretty, vibrant, um, beautiful, like, fuchsia maroon shadow on my eye look and it just didn't do that for me it just was kind of more of a meh kind of color so I do hope that with the reformulation that those three definitely have a different kind of formulation to them that is going to bring more impact and going to last a little bit longer than what they've got going on here um, but the rest of the shadows in here mm, save this one this one was also a little bit, it didn't want to stick around as long as some of the other ones. It is, you know, a really bright, vibrant green, and sometimes that happens with your bright, bright vibrant colors. But that one I would put, I loved that one for my inner corner, and I would put it on my inner corner, but within a couple hours, it was kind of not there on my inner corner. So, um, and that just might be due to my watery eyes, but typically my watery eyes will turn a shadow a different color instead of like vacating it completely, especially on that inner corner spot. So, um, with that being said, I am going to swatch these for you. I don't think that they swatch super well for the most part, but you know, I have been surprised in the past by some swatches. So here we go. Here we go. Okay, so the first one is this one and it is Saffron. Saffron is a like neon orange matte shadow. It does feel a little bit grippy in the pan. It's probably one of the grippiest feeling shadows in the pan. So it does have a little bit of that like almost sandy texture to it. And then this one here is called Mirage and it is a red metallic kind of leaning warmer. So like a, like an orange red metallic. It's really very pretty. I loved it in my eye looks. It kind of gives a little bit of a duochromy effect. I feel like it does have a little bit of a shift, but not like so shifty that you can call it a duochrome. Then we have Aubergine, which is one of those sh shadows that I said had a little bit of opportunity to it. I do think that they had an opportunity to go like super vibrant with this shadow and it's just not super vibrant on first application. This is like a red toned violet matte. And then we have this Dusty Mauve, which is called Mulberry. This is also a matte shadow and this is um, the lightest most transition like shade in the palette but again like I said it's a really dark shade to be a transition so I don't foresee that ever being anybody's transition shade unless you're like me and our hashtag purple for a transition kind of person and then we have this one which is the duochrome it is called biscotti and it is a pink lavender gold. It is in my eye look today and it is on the very inner corner. And in my eye look, it looks very gold. But when partnered with these shadows here, it looks very pink. I really quite loved this duochrome. I think it's beautiful. It's a beautiful shade in the palette and it works well in almost any eye look. I don't think it goes so well with those last five shades in the palette, which are more like blue. I think it goes really well though with the first two rows. So you have a good nine other shades to match this with and it's gonna go perfectly fine. The next row we have Cider, which is this beautiful mustard yellow brown matte. It really does do something spectacular to um, and I look and I didn't put it in today's eye look, but it totally could have been in today's eye look, but I did mix it a lot with those greens and blues down on the bottom row. And oh my gosh, it just does something so, so special to an eye look. Then we have Firefly, which is a beautiful like golden orange metallic shadow. Then we have Pumpkin, which is a dark orange matte shade. And then we have Hazelnut, which is a orange brown. And then we have Acorn, which is a beautiful dark brown matte. I was really happy to see that the neutrality in this dark brown because this palette really needed a brown that was going to go warm or cool no matter what you were putting it into, considering that there is a lot of warmth, but there is also a lot of cool in this palette. I did say that they don't swatch very well. But I think that you could see the problem swatches, the problem colors. I also think that you could see that between those oranges, there isn't a whole lot of differences. 
So, I mean, back to what I said about, you know, some opportunities with the shades in here being too similar. Okay, the last row we have Bayberry, which is a beautiful silvery blue metallic shade. It is so, so pretty. I loved this shade. And this shade with that biscotti shade is what is in that um, halo eye biscotti tap just on the dead center of the eye look and then this all over the lid space oh my god such a pretty pretty shade then we have atlantis which is a blue toned teal matte then we have forest pine which is a green toned teal matte can you guys see how similar those look in an eye look they look absolutely no different then we have Moss, which is an olive green matte. Then we have Sherbet, 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 which is a chartreuse green. And I accidentally just kind of went over the top of that olive green. So my camera just died and I'm not exactly certain how much of the swatches got in here. I do hope all of the swatches got in here. Um, and if not, I'm super sorry, but I do have them still on my hands because we've played this one too many times lately. I feel like every single time I record one of these videos, my camera dies. So there's that. Here's the swatches. I think that you guys can see from the swatches on my hands that this truly is the quintessential fall color story. This palette is just so, so beautiful and I can't even handle it. But I do think that you can also see the similarities in some of the tones in here. There's just a lot of redundancy that doesn't need to exist. Like maybe we could have used a really deep like eggplant purple, maybe like a deep dark red also instead of that like neon red that really performs like an orange. But also looking at them, like this, this shade here called Cider looks a lot like this um, green here called Sherbet. But in real life, in person, I do feel like there's enough of a difference between the two shades that both of them bring something to the table. One's a little more muted and brown toned than the other, and the other one is very vibrant, like almost yellow toned. So I do think that the swatches aren't doing them justice in the camera lens but also swatches in the camera lens are showing you quite a bit more difference in the oranges and the greens here than what I truly feel is present in real life. I don't think that this is a bad palette. I think this is actually quite a beautiful palette. I will keep it in my collection. I am happy to have it. I did have a lot of fun with this palette and do think that I could continue to have a lot of fun with this palette. I definitely don't think that it's a bad formula at all but I am happy that they reformulated because I can see where there's opportunity for them to improve some of these shadows. I definitely don't know that this is a user-friendly newbie makeup wear kind of palette, but I definitely do think that it is a palette that if you know how to put color on your lid, if you know how to blend even the slightest, that this is going to be a fairly decent kind of palette for those, those people. And again, quintessential fall tones um this is a perfect palette to pull into your collection during this time of year and what a better time to do it than when it's been reformulated um you guys can see there is uh, quite a bit of staining with those blues on my hands and a little bit with the oranges on my hands as well i am going to go pull my palette for next week and i'm gonna come back and i'll be right back so next week in my 150th episode of Palette Roulette, we will be looking at the Natasha Denona Love Palette. This is a palette that has been in my collection actually since it came out. And I actually have never even used it. Why am I like this? Tell me why I'm like this. But I am so excited to like physically touch this palette. You guys did see that I did roll in some brand new palettes into my collection. I really would be really loving to do one of those palettes, but I am doing this palette for a specific reason. Number one, it is the 150th episode of this. I have been doing this video for 150 weeks which means I have been doing this video for almost the same amount of time as I've been on YouTube. 
um, this series. You guys, I haven't repeat, I haven't repeated a palette ever. I don't think that I've even decluttered very much of those palettes, if I'm honest. So I am so excited to be on episode 150 for this palette roulette series. It was based on and built from the want and need and desire just to go through my palette collection and dip my fingers into every single one of them. And my friend Lisa, knowing my struggle, <laughs> was like, why don't you try this? Like, go watch this channel. She does it really well. And that channel no longer, I mean, she does videos now, but it's all planner content. So those videos, I don't even know are out there still. And if they are, I'll link a playlist in my, in my, um, in my description box for you. But, um, she used to be in my description box. I used to have all of her information in there, but her channel is no longer what it was previously when I started watching her. So, um, my friend Lisa gave me her information. I went and watched. I'm like, this is amazing. Can I do this? <laughs> she never answered me back. So I credited her and I just started doing it. And I cannot believe I am 150 episodes in. That is insane to me. So next week we will be reviewing this palette. And at the end of that palette review, I will be giving away this palette. So I do have two. I am happy to do a giveaway for my 150th episode. And if you want to win this palette, you have to be sure to number one, put a heart in your comment because this is the love palette. Number two, you have to be a public subscriber on my channel. I don't know how many times I have said this and still have these people not publicly subscribed to my channel. Uh, if you're subscribed, cool beans, but you need to go in and you need to make sure that your subscriptions are listed as public because if I can't see that you're subscribed, this is a giveaway for my subscribers. So you have to be publicly subscribed. I have to be able to see you doing that. I am going to just keep it really simple. You have to give me a heart in your comment and you have to comment on this video and you have to be publicly su subscribed. And that's it. That's all you have to do. This is open internationally. I think that one palette is probably not going to cost me all that much to ship internationally. So, um, it's fair game for everybody. If you, I hope it's not going to cost that much to ship internationally, but, um, fair game for everybody. So I do hope that you're in for it. I hope that you will come back next week to see this video. I hope that you stuck around in this video today long enough to see the giveaway that's going on next week. And, uh, yeah, you guys, just thank you so, so much for sticking around. Thank you for subscribing to my channel and um, being along this ride with me and being here for 150 episodes of Palo Roulette. I know who you are. I see your comments every single week, week over week. And I'm just so, so grateful to have every single one of you in my life. So just a little bit of gratitude for me to you. And I hope that you're in for it. Thank you guys so much for joining me today. I hope that 20 21 is treating you all kindly. I hope that you and yours are well and that you're safe and you're healthy and you're getting along as good as you can in this crazy chaotic world that we currently live in. And I hope that you are all loving each other, but loving each other from afar. And until next time, bye friends.